When two elephants fight, the grass suffers. Contrary to what you hear in the Western mainstream media, the United States, along with its allies, may not be innocent after all in the current Ukraine-Russia war. Putin is the aggressor. Putin chose this war. And now he and his country will bear the consequences. President Biden has said recently that this article is imperative, it will be implemented. This means there will be a military confrontation between Russia and NATO. But first, you must understand that there are typically three viewpoints to a story. Your viewpoint, my viewpoint, and the truth. The great majority of the West has seen the Ukrainian conflict from a Western perspective. Putin, on the other hand, has been viewing the same situation from his point of view. To make sense of the crisis in Ukraine, you understand what transpired in the past. Otherwise, you will not make sense of the present. We must go all the way back to the formation of NATO, which was founded after World War II by 12 founding members. NATO, or the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, was established on April 4, 1949, as a military alliance to provide a counterbalance against Soviet troops. In reaction to NATO's founding, Russia, seeing the alliance as a danger to its national interests, established the Warsaw Pact in 1955. The Warsaw Pact's main objective was to defend its members against NATO. If any member nation is attacked, the other members will rally to its defense. The Warsaw Pact was formally dissolved with the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991. Obviously, it would not have happened without a compromise between the US and Russia. Under George H.W. Bush's leadership, the United States assured Soviet Union leader Mikhail Gorbachev that if East Germany joined NATO, NATO would not expand, not even one inch eastward. Putin has used this agreement to launch an invasion of Ukraine. Unfortunately, the United States and NATO failed to uphold its end of the bargain. If you look at this situation honestly, you will see that NATO's conduct was only a provocation to Russia. Aside from the original 12 founding members, NATO continues to accept additional members following the Soviet Union's collapse. Four additional countries, Greece, Turkey, Germany and Spain, joined NATO between 1952 to 1982. In 1999, Czech Republic, Hungary and Poland became members of NATO. In 2004, several Central and former Soviet Union countries Bulgaria, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Romania, Slovakia, and Slovenia joined NATO. Albania and Croatia became members in 2009. Montenegro and North Macedonia were added to NATO in 2017 and 2020 respectively. Indeed, NATO promised it would not move an inch, but it did, thus provoking Russia to act. The United States has denied that it made such a promise. However, several declassified documents prove Russia's account is true. In 2021, NATO officially recognized Ukraine as an aspiring member. While Russia should be held responsible for its ungodly acts of shedding innocent blood, the United States and NATO should equally be held accountable for creating the crisis. For the last 200 years, our country has operated under the Monroe Doctrine, embracing the principle that as the dominant power in the Western Hemisphere, the United States has the right, according to the United States, to intervene against any country that might threaten our alleged interests. That's United States policy. And under this doctrine, the United States has undermined and overthrown at least a dozen countries throughout Latin America, Central America, and the Caribbean. The fact is that the U.S. and Ukraine <coughs> entering into a deeper security relationship is likely to have some very serious costs for both countries. If Ukraine joins NATO, the U.S. will have a significant military presence on Russia's border. Anyone who recognizes the United States' horrific track record of toppling sovereign countries would understand why Putin would take such dramatic measures to preserve its borders. If you are a student of the Bible, especially end-time prophecy, you will see that the conflict between Ukraine and Russia has a prophetic undertone. Jesus forewarned in Matthew 24, 7 that nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. 
President Biden has insisted that they won't be going into Ukraine. But if Russia attacks a NATO country, the U.S. would then be required to step in. Could this crisis lead to World War III? We pray it never happens. But even if it does, you have no reason to be afraid if you are a believer in Jesus Christ. Jesus, in John 14, 2, assures us that he is preparing a better place for us in heaven. If you have not committed your life to Jesus Christ, repent of your sins, surrender your life to him, and allow him to be your Lord and Savior. Why not do it now? Tomorrow may be too late. God is in control, no matter how frightening our current world appears to be. How long will this conflict last? Only time will tell. What's obvious is that the United States and NATO flagrantly violated the agreement not to expand NATO eastward. Certainly, they were well aware of the dire consequences of their actions. Among others, Biden's CIA director, William J. Burns, has been warning about the provocative effect of NATO expansion on Russia since 1995. That's when Burns, then a political officer in the U.S. Embassy in Moscow, reported to Washington that hostility to early NATO expansion is almost universally felt across the domestic political spectrum here. This warning fell on deaf ears, and NATO continued to expand toward Russia. When President Bill Clinton's administration moved to bring Poland, Hungary, and the Czech Republic into NATO, Burns wrote that the decision was premature at best and needlessly provocative at worst. Again, no one listened. In June 1997, 50 prominent foreign policy experts signed an open letter to Clinton, saying, We believe that the current US-led effort to expand NATO is a policy error of historic proportions that would unsettle European stability. You might be wondering, what about Ukraine? As an independent nation, doesn't it have the right to join NATO? It does. Simply put, Ukraine is caught in the crossfire of a power war between two superpowers, and it is paying a high and unjust price for it. When two elephants fight, the grass suffers.